So here's what you know. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that I, I love to do is I start to talk to people. Um, I travel a lot. I speak to a lot of different people, not necessarily uh, internet savvy people. Uh, I talk to CEOs of big companies. I talk to uh, volunteers. I've talked to all kinds of people all around the world. Uh, and the one thing that people do, if you start talking to them about the internet in Africa, this is what they'll say. They'll, they'll cite this kind of story. They'll say, oh, yes, I've heard of this. Uh, people uh, on mobile phones in Africa uh, will be able to uh, text somewhere and find out the price of crops, uh, and then they can deliver the crops to the place with the highest price, and their income will go up. And uh, this is really wonderful, amazing thing. Well, that's true enough. Uh, there are things like that going on, but I think that that way of thinking about what's going on uh, with the internet in Africa, and I'm, I'm singling out Africa, but we could, we could generalize this to many, many different places around the world. I think this clouds the mind because there's a lot more going on than that. Uh, here's what you probably don't know. So this is what you do know. You're, you're imagining people are, are just doing very primitive things. What you probably don't know, this phone here, this is my phone. I use this phone uh, every day in, uh, when I'm in the UK, which is most of the time. Uh, and a friend of mine picked this phone up for me in uh, Kenya. Uh, it's an unlocked uh, phone. Uh, so no contract, he just brought me the phone. I stuck in my SIM card, I was, I was off to the races. Uh, it is an Android phone, so it has full capability of apps. If you have an iPhone, it does more or less everything that your iPhone does. The screen's not quite as good. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but it functions. I'll tell you one thing, compared to every other smartphone I've had in the last three years, the great thing about it is the battery actually lasts more than one day, which is a bit of a miracle. Um, so this phone uh, it has become incredibly popular. This is for sale in Kenya. They have sold, uh, I've seen conflicting figures, uh, but as many as 350,000 of these have been sold in Kenya at the price point of $80. Uh, so this is amazing. So when you think about uh, projects uh, like the, the famous $100 laptop or some of the things that are going on like that, what's coming really, really fast is Real, uh, real smartphone technology at an affordable price. Obviously, we're not reaching the poorest of the poor yet, but when you think that a phone of this capability has gone from a price of 800 down to 80 in a very short period of time, how much longer does it take until something is available for 40, 20, eight dollars, um, essentially affordable by almost everyone? Let's just take a look at one country, Nigeria, to look at the growth of the internet there. In 2000, 0.1% of the country was online. Uh, these are the ITU numbers. Uh, 2006, 3.1%. 2009, 16.1%. And 2011, 29%. So the kind of growth that we all remember from the dot-com boom days is happening right now in Africa. Um, if you look, look at the bandwidth, a big part of what's going on in Nigeria, and I, I chose Nigeria. It's a bit of an unfair uh, country to choose because it is one of the points that the, that the undersea cables are being dropped in uh, from Europe. They had 72 megabits in 02, uh, 693 megabits in 07, and then by the end of this year, they're going to have 12 terabits of connectivity dropped into Nigeria. I mean, this is an astonishing thing, uh, which is leading to, although there are a lot of problems across Africa, as uh, we've seen things in many, many different places, uh, with monopoly telecoms and the competition's not quite there, uh, potential regulation and so forth. Uh, but we are beginning to see a crash in the price of backbone internet access, which is going to lead uh, to cheaper retail and so forth, and more and more people coming online. I just recently, this is for fun, this is a, a friend of mine asked to test at the same time. Uh, this is what, he, he was getting a speed in New York, uh, he has normal broadband in New York, 8.38. I was sitting in Lagos, Nigeria, I got 9.33 megabits. And look at my uplink speed, 11. Uh, he was getting 0.95. So, I thought I was better off in Lagos, Nigeria than in New York City. Uh, now, let's be completely fair about this. This is actually, uh, you, you know, the report from speedtest.net says faster than 98% of the internet in, in Nigeria, and that's absolutely true. I was at a fancy hotel uh, right at the, you know, right at the point where the cables dropped in from the sea. Uh, this kind of bandwidth is not common in Nigeria. However, it exists. It's real bandwidth. It's really there. Uh, it's a matter of it being more and more distributed.